In this lecture, we will cover seven basic tools of quality. The first question is, what are the seven basic tools of quality? And the answer is, seven basic tools of quality are those tools that help organizations understand their processes to improve them. Now let's see them. So these are the seven basic tools of quality. Process mapping, check sheets, histogram, Pareto charts, fishbone diagram, 5Y analysis, and run charts. Let's first cover process mapping tool in this lecture. To understand process mapping, first we must understand what is the process. So a process is a set of activities and tasks that transforms input into products and services, which are then delivered to the customer. That means the process has activities and tasks within it. And to represent these activities and tasks, we use process map. A process map, therefore, is a diagram depicting activities and tasks, people, systems, inputs, outputs, and decisions made in a process. What do we hope to accomplish by mapping our process? It's all about understanding and articulating how we deliver our services and product. By visualizing our process, we can answer questions like, How long does the process take? What steps consumes the most time? Where are we seeing defect and why? And how can we change the process to improve it? Process mapping also supports standard operating procedures, training, and meeting regulatory requirements. We will cover one type of process maps in this module, called as SIPOC. Now we'll see what SIPOC stands for. What is SIPOC? An example of SIPOC. Why SIPOC is so important, and when is SIPOC needed? So, these are the six topics related to SIPOC we will cover. To start with, SIPOC stands for Supplier, Inputs, Process, Outputs, and Customer. Now, let's see what is SIPOC. SIPOC is the highest level map containing the dimension. Suppliers, Inputs, Process, Outputs, and Customers related to the process where suppliers are the internal or external providers of inputs to the process. Input means what materials, knowledge, or data are provided by the supplier, which is needed to execute the process. The process contains five to seven high-level steps in the process. Output means what product or services we create as a result of the process. And the last one is customer. They are the one to whom we deliver our product or service. This was the break of SIPOC. Now, let's see an example to understand it. As an example, let's create a SIPOC of the process of cooking this burger. A freshly cooked McDonald's burger consists of two buns, a patty, some condiments, cheese, tomato ketchup, and other ingredients. Here, the supplier is a vendor who provides the raw materials required to make the burger. There could be just one supplier for all the raw materials or McDonald's may hire multiple suppliers for different raw materials. The inputs include raw materials such as buns, patty, condiments, cheese, tomato ketchup, and various other ingredients required to cook the burger. The process of cooking the burger is that the patty and buns are separately heated in an oven. Then they are placed together other ingredients such as cheese, condiments, etc. are added based on customer's order. The output is a delicious McDonald's burger. The customer is the one who has ordered this burger. This was a simple example to understand how to create SIPOC. Now the question is, why SIPOC is so important? SIPOC helps us in defining the boundaries for the process and provides a structured way to discuss the process and obtain stakeholder consensus on how the process operates today. It helps to answer questions like, what are the major steps in the process? 
Where does the process begin and end? What are the primary inputs and outputs? Who are the key customers and suppliers? Now comes the next question. When is SIPOC needed? SIPOC is the first tool we should consider using when we are working with a process. Use SIPOC to provide a one-page overview to facilitate a quick understanding of the high-level process as it is today. Better understand your customer's requirement, who your suppliers are, and what inputs they provide. Define the exact scope of process improvement. Now, let's summarize all the points we covered in this lecture. First, we saw the seven basic tools of quality. Process mapping, check sheets, histogram, Pareto charts, fishbone diagram, 5Y analysis, and run charts. After that, we covered process mapping in detail, where we covered what is the process, what is process mapping, what is SIPOC, an example of SIPOC, why SIPOC is so important, and when is SIPOC needed. With this, the lecture ends.